The trial draws near for the former police officer accused of killing George Floyd, and it's bringing new attention to a push for police accountability here in Texas. And the, the reality is, is that we're going to have to figure out whether or not that will pass. How a key part of a reform bill is causing conflict at the Capitol. Some lawmakers want to take power back from the governor. We'll look at the debate over his emergency authority. Plus, who's next in line for the COVID vaccine and why? We look at how Texas compares to other states when it comes to phase 1C. Hello and thank you for joining us for State of Texas. I'm Josh Hinkle. Jury selection started this week in the trial of the former Minneapolis police officer charged in the death of George Floyd. The case is having an impact here in Texas, drawing attention to issues of police reform and accountability. Derek Chauvin faces murder and manslaughter charges. We've all seen the video from last May. It showed the officer kneeling on Floyd's neck for nearly nine minutes. He repeatedly told officers he could not breathe. Floyd's death sparked a large social justice movement. Protests happened around the country, including here in Texas during spring and summer. Police reform legislation named in honor of Floyd is moving forward in Texas. Politics reporter John Engel checks in on the status and shows us why it faces such fierce opposition from police groups. We'll get something done. State Senator Royce West is one of the authors of the George Floyd Act. It would ban chokeholds and require an officer to intervene when another uses excessive force. But it also goes after qualified immunity, a protection for officers from civil lawsuits, the most contentious piece of the bill. It is a huge sticking point, and the, the reality is, is that we're going to have to figure out whether or not that will pass. West said he talked this week with Governor Greg Abbott, who has spent the past year pledging to defend law enforcement and that they're having good faith negotiations. Police groups say stripping away qualified immunity has to be off the table for any reform to move forward in Texas. It would cause fewer and fewer people to be willing to take on that role, to take on that obligation. Last week, the U.S. House passed the George Floyd Justice in Policing Act, but it also faces an uncertain future because of the end to qualified immunity in a Senate where Democrats need 10 Republican votes. But it's just a question of whether or not a law enforcement officer who violates their responsibility to the public can be held accountable. Political experts say there's room for negotiation on police reform in Texas, especially if it means investing more resources. The problem are the positions taken by, you know, the outer ideological wings in both parties. For State of Texas, I'm John Engel. Senator West is also a co-author of the Mike Ramos Act. It's named after a man who was shot and killed in April of last year by an Austin police officer. Ramos was not armed. State Senator Sarah Eckhart filed the bill Thursday. His mother hopes the bill will prevent other deaths. It means everything to me that this law, the Michael Mike Ramos Act will train police to escalate rather than escalate like they did to my son. The bill would direct the Texas Commission on Law Enforcement to create new training model on de-escalation and use of force. It also establishes a list of offenses that can lead to a peace officer's license being revoked. That includes a lack of competence in performing duties, illegal drug use, lack of truthfulness in court, and a pattern of excessive use of force. The Mike Ramos Act is one of many bills this legislative session that address systemic uh, inequalities in our criminal justice system, systemic inequalities that have uh, had such an incredibly uh, negative, harmful, even deadly effect on communities of color. The bill would also expand access to police body camera video. Public information advocates are one step closer to seeing greater transparency from Texas police, especially when it comes to people who die in their custody. We first told you how hundreds of times in recent years police agencies have filed the required reports about those deaths, either late or incomplete, leaving the public with questions about what really happened. Since bringing that problem to his attention last fall, Austin Representative Eddie Rodriguez has been working on legislation to give the Attorney General's office more teeth to hold police agencies breaking that law accountable. He filed his bill earlier this month. It gives the AG's office the ability to investigate when they receive a complaint and the agency has not followed the law. They can issue a notice, and if the death reports still aren't fixed, it can come with a fine of at least between $1,000 a day and sometimes more. 
The AG can sue to get that money, which would then go to the state's Crime Victims Compensation Fund. The bill is now awaiting assignment to a House committee for a hearing. Another police transparency bill we're watching stems from a problem we've been investigating for three years. How Texas police can choose to permanently withhold public information if someone dies in their custody, something known as the dead suspect loophole. This month, we saw Representative Joe Moody's bill filed to close that loophole, along with aiming to create a public database for use of force reports, requiring the release of video of critical incidents like officer-involved shootings and deaths in custody within 60 days of the incident, except in certain circumstances, making requests for body camera video simpler, and preventing sustained disciplinary records from being hidden in an officer's personnel file, among other items addressed in the legislation. Moody's similar bills in the past two sessions have failed, facing opposition from powerful police unions. But with such a focus in the past year on nationwide protests over policing, supporters hope these transparency measures have a greater chance of making it to the governor's desk this session. We have an update to our Missing in Texas investigation now. Last month, we told you about legislation filed by newly elected state representative Lacey Hall. It would require law enforcement to enter information about missing persons into the National Missing and Unidentified Persons System, or NamUs. The Houston Republican wrote the bill after meeting David Fritz, who searched two years for his missing son, Joseph, and after hearing the story of Alice Almendarez, it took her family 12 years to find her father, John. In both cases, police found the bodies of the men shortly after they were reported missing, but poor communication kept the information from reaching family members. Hall called the legislation John and Joseph's Law. Since our report, State Senator Carol Alvarado filed a companion bill in the Senate, and Hall's bill was assigned to the House Homeland Security and Public Safety Committee. Last week, four other House lawmakers signed on as joint authors. The power grid managed by the Electric Reliability Council of Texas failed during the winter storm, but the light stayed on in other parts of the state outside the ERCOT grid. Our investigation looks at the reasons why. The first principle of all of this is do what is right, and the right thing is to correct an error and a mistake. A rare move by the lieutenant governor, how he stepped in to push the state's utility regulator to make a multi-billion dollar billing change. Everyone 50 and older, the new guidelines that open up vaccine eligibility for millions more Texans starting tomorrow. 